talk about aliens, please. Um, are we ever going to learn if, there, if we have company? Uh, how well, will I mean, we, know? we don't know. We haven't found any life beyond Earth, not, not even pond scum. And remember 1996, it was this big story. The, you know, the front page in the New York Times for three days running had this story about this Martian meteorite. And the claim by some NASA scientists and a guy at Stanford was that this Martian meteorite had some dead Martian pond scum in it. What the, what the neighbors didn't realize, because they said, these, these are my tax dollars going to find dead pond scum in space when I have live pond scum in the bathtub. But what they didn't realize is that if you did find that, that would tell you right away that you know, life's not a miracle. Because look, the next planet out had life. We haven't done that. That's not been compelling. But I think that within the next 20 years, we'll either find life, because there are half a dozen other worlds in our own solar system that may have liquid oceans. Okay. Actually, there's seven. So maybe we'll explore those and find them. Maybe we'll find oxygen in the atmosphere of a planet around another star. Maybe SETI will succeed, and we'll find that we have some cosmic confrères that are as clever as this audience. So I, I think all that's likely to happen within the, the generation that's sitting in this audience tonight. Could it be possible that there is life somewhere that doesn't rely on the same things we do, meaning oxygen and water? Like, if that's what we're looking for to find life, could there be life that doesn't need Well, a lot of people say, you know, it's always carbon, it's carbon-based life forms, you know, Captain, whatever. I mean, carbon, carbon, you know, has those four covalent balance. It likes to hook up with other atoms. It's a very friendly atom. There are other friendly atoms. If you look under carbon in the, in the periodic table, those of you who remember, you know, high school chemistry, right underneath it is silicon. So silicon plays a big role in artificial life in science fiction. And underneath Including that... Star Trek, though. Yeah, silicon-based... The rock, based, I mean, the Horta. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. But silicon, all right, but you silicon's know. a bigger atom, so it's not as friendly. You know, you combine carbon with oxygen, you get carbon dioxide, which, as you know, plays an important role in life here. Uh, so yeah. probably not, is the answer. Like, probably not. Well, who knows? Actually, that gets to one of my objections about Star Trek, because the aliens are always, to begin with, anthropomorphic. They look like the your neighbors. Eyes and mouth. That's for dramatic purposes. But the real objection is that they're always at about our level, our technological level, so we can take them on. I mean, the Klingons, you know, they're, they're a bit troublesome, but they're more or less at our level, so it's a fair fight, mm. right? That happens in all the movies, all the TV shows. In fact, if Except you were for the to, Borg. The Borg. Yeah, I mean, even them. Yeah. You know, we always triumph because of love or, or yeah. bravery or some yeah. other human fallibility, really, okay? And so you, th you think about it. If you actually encountered the extraterrestrials, they would be way beyond us, way, way beyond us. If they came to Earth, it would be Bambi meets Godzilla, and we would be the ungulate. Right. And this is what Hawking says, right? So, so do you think they're going to be as angry and, and, and mean and hungry as well, he? Well, Faith, that's, that's alien sociology. And, and I have to tell you, the data set for alien sociology is sparse. We don't, <laughs> well, but, but, we, we don't know anything about that. But, but if you're going to worry about that, if you have nothing better to worry about than the fact that the aliens may come to Earth and ruin your whole day, then consider the fact that ever since the Second World War, we've been broadcasting signals into space, okay? And they're not very strong. I mean, WABC here in New York and so forth, that's been leaking into space. Kukla, Fran, and Ollie, you know, howdy doody, it's all out there. I Love Lucy is washing over a new star system about at the rate of one a day, one new star system a day. I don't know if the advertisers are paying for that, but <laughs> you might say they'll never be able to pick that up. Well, any society, this is easy to demonstrate, any society that has the capability of coming to Earth and doing whatever they're going to do, abducting you for these experiments are not appropriate on a first date, whatever they're going to do, they can pick up those signals. So if you're going to worry about this, it's too late. That horse has left the barn.